lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti sanjari harti leelaya विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन द तत्पुरुष समास तत्पुरुष समास इज वन ऑफ द मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ samasas in sanskrit others being avyay bhava and bahuvrihi and dvandva by far the tatpurusha samasa is the most productive amongst all the four there are also many sub varieties of the tatpurusha samasa which are the feature of the tatpurusha samasa also the number of sutras panini has composed in order to explain the tatpurusha samasa they are quite a few in comparison with the other three types of samasas be it the samasa vidhayaka sutra or the samasanta swara vidhayaka sutra or the samasa swara vidhayaka sutra the tatpurusha samasa is explained with good number of sutras and that is not what is the case with the other samasas the derivation of the tatpurusha samasa can be shown in the simple form in this manner we have x and y two independent and separate units in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as the accent but they are interrelated and so the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate an output with only one entity so x y is that output now this is one entity in terms of meaning as well as word form and as well as the accent now the feature of the tatpurusha samasa is that y occupies the position of the head what it means is that when xy becomes the part of the sentence then it is through y that the other words in the sentence are linked to xy and x is theoretically not allowed to have an external linkage without going through y when the examples are found where x has got some interrelation with another external world word without going through y such samasas are termed as exceptions and are noted down as asamartha samasas we have seen several sub types of the tatpurusha samasa namely the vibhakti tatpurusha and also the karma dharaya tatpurusha then we also saw the tatpurusha samasa type namely the gati the pradi samasa and we are studying now gati samasa the sutra stating the pradi samasa and the gati samasa is the same namely kugati pradaya 2218 kugati pradaya we have already studied the pradi samasa 
we have already studied the samasa that happens to ku now we shall study in this lecture the samasa of gati so the sutra is gugati pradaya which is prathama bahuvachana which means the word ku the words term gati and the words grouped as pradis sup and sahasupa are the words continued samartha padavidhi is also continued nityam is also continued so the meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadikas are ku the words term gati and the words grouped as pradis is always compounded with any other interrelated subanta this is a nitya samasa of a svapad vigraha type the purpose of the term gati is twofold one the swara or the specific accent which is stated by a few sutras like gati ranantaraha or gati ragatau etc gati karak upapadat krit etc and shatva natva abhava so shatva and natva these are the two operations that we have studied earlier the retroflex substitution that is prescribed in the ashtadhyayi using the technical term upasarga and when the gati saudhnya is given the shatva and natva is not stated so there is negation of shatva and natva and also in particular this compound which is called gati samasa the term gati is primarily assigned to pradis when they are linked to an action denoted by the verbal root and then also the term gati is assigned to some other words stated in the section 1460 to 1479 and we shall study this section in little detail so if you have the meaning to be expressed as after having made something extensively yat prakaroti this is the laukika vigraha vakya and so you have pra plus su and kru plus tva plus su so this is the nitya samasa so obviously the elements which figure in the laukika vigraha do not figure in the finally derived compound output so pra karoti is what is to be focused on and now we have pra which is a pradi but now it is linked with the action of doing so it is termed as gati kru means to do and pra kru means some to do something extensively and so now there is this semantic relatedness and now if you have the suffix twa which indicates that this is an indeclinable and this is a pratipadika and so now there is a compounding that is possible in pra karoti even though there is semantic relatedness compounding is not possible as karoti ends in a thing and we have already seen that the basic condition for compounding is that both the padas have to be subantas so now here we have pra plus su plus kratva plus su so in this case now because there is gati samasa so samasa saudhnya takes place and once that takes place there is a substitution of y in place of tva so we have samase anai purve ktvo lyapu tva is substituted by the suffix lyap and so we now have pra plus su plus kru plus y plus su and then we see that the samasa saudhnya has happened so the pratipadika saudhnya is applied and so the sutra supo dhatu pratipadika yoho also applies and so the supratyaya is deleted so we have pra plus 0 plus kru plus y plus 0 
and now because the suffix ye has a marker p so cru will be appended with the augment t at the n and so finally we derive the compound output in the form of prakritya prakritya means yat prakaroti after having made something extensively but this is a nitya samasa similarly karika shabdasya upasankhyanam is another statement which also suggests that the word karika should also be termed as gati and so it will also undergo the same process and so if the meaning is having done the trade karika refers to the trade so after having done the trade if this is the meaning to be expressed you will get the compound derived form as karika kritya and if the meaning to be conveyed is the trade the done trade the compound will be karika krita or karika kritam now let us study some more sutras in the section that explains the gati saudnya the first such sutra is uryadit svida chasch 1461 what it means is that and also the words beginning with uri as well as the words ending in the suffix chvi and dat are termed as gati so the words in the uriyadi list is are the following uri urari papi tali dhusi also in the sense of hinsa are the words shakala samshakala dhamsakala and brahmshakala in the sense of pida there are words like gulagudha in the sense of sah there is a word sajuhu in the sense of vikara there are the words falu and phali again in the sense of himsa the words are karali kevali shevali varshali maramasa and masamasa and we also have another group of words washat avashat shraushat swaha swadha vandha pradus shrat and avis all of them they are termed as uriyadi and they will be termed as gati and they will undergo the gati samasa so now if you have the meaning namely something accepted by someone yad uri kriyate so we have uri as well as urari plus su plus krita plus su and now there is a samasa saudnya so there is a pratipadika saudnya and so you have supodhatu pratipadika yoho applying and so you have now uri or urari plus zero plus krita plus zero and so finally you get the compound in the form of uri krita or urari krita this is also a nitya samasa this means the same thing as yad uri or urari kriyate similarly if you have the meaning after having accepted something you also have uri or urari kritva and then you have uri or urari plus su plus kritya and kritva undergoes the same operation as stated before where tva gets substituted by lep because there is a samasa and then there is the augment added at the end of kru so you have kritya and then you get uri or urari plus 0 plus kritya plus 0 and finally you get the compound output uri kritya as well as urari kritya now the next 
word mentioned in the sutra uryadi chveda chasch is chvi now chvi is a suffix stated by the sutra kribhasti yoge sampadya kartari chvi 5450 there is also the word abhuta tadbhave in the same sutra now this sutra says that the suffix chvi is added to a subanta in the sense that which was not there before comes into being now chvi is a zero suffix and is deleted by vera pruktasya 6167 but this suffix triggers the operation stated by the sutra 7432 asya chvau substituting long e in place of a so now we have the meaning after having made something white which earlier was not after having made something white which earlier was not so ashuklam shuklam kritva now we have shukla plus am plus chvi plus kru plus tva plus su now in the sense of abhuta tadbhava the suffix chvi is added so shuklam plus chvi plus kritva plus su now in this case the entire chvi suffix gets deleted of course shukla is related with the action of doing as karma so there is semantic relatedness now once we have this alaukika vigraha there is samasa saudnya then there is pratipadika saudnya and then the supratyayas get deleted so and am they get deleted so you have shukla plus 0 plus kru plus twa plus 0 chvi pratyaya is deleted also by vera pruktasya so we have shukla plus 0 plus 0 plus kru plus twa plus 0 and then we have shukla plus 0 plus 0 plus kru plus y where the y substitute takes place and then we get also the augment added and finally asya chavau applies 7432 which substitutes a in shukla by e and so we get the form shukli kritya shukli kritya means after having made something white which earlier was not ashuklam shuklam kritva shukli kritya so the word shukli ends in the suffix chvi which is a zero suffix and so shukli krutya is termed as gati samasa by this particular sutra it gives gati saudnya to shukli and then there is a samasa that takes place because of kugati pradaya and we have the form shukli krutya now when the chvi suffix is added followed by a tinganta there is no samasa so if you have shukli karoti this is also possible shukli karoti in case of shukli karoti there is no samasa possible because karoti is not a subanta now what happens to both the words the words are semantically linked but still they both are having independent status shukli is gati and karoti is the tinganta verb and they are independent words even though we write them together for the sake of convenience we must remember that they both have independent status here however because this is a compound so they both are merged together so they should be written together shukli kritya the other element in the sutra uryadi chvida chasch is dach this is also a suffix and this is stated by the sutra avyakta nukaranat dvejavarardhat anitau dach 
what it means is that the suffix dach is added to that indistinct imitation of vyakta anukarana the second part of which comprises of two vowels dvejavarardhat when the word iti does not follow repeat the suffix dach is added to that indistinct imitation the second part of which comprises of two vowels when the word iti does not follow now there is a statement dachi bahulam dve which says that many times the indistinct imitation is reduplicated when immediately before the suffix dach at the stage of when it is desired to be spoken so now you have patal which is an imitation of the natural sound pata there is some natural sound and we imitate it by saying pata now when the desire to add the suffix dach arises this gets reduplicated so we get pata getting substituted by pata pata and then we add the suffix dach so pata pata plus dach dach has got d as a marker and ch also as a marker what remains is a so we have pata pata plus a now because of the marker d the final a in pata is deleted and so we have the word now pata pat plus a and finally pata pata so pata pata is the word ending in dach and this is what is termed as gati by the sutra uryadi chvidachascha now if we have the meaning after having made the pata pata sound pata pata karoti so here by the sutra kugati pradaya the gati samasa takes place and so you have pata pata plus su plus krut kru plus dva plus su now because there is this samasa saudnya pratipadika saudnya also takes place so supodhatu pratipadika yoh applies and we have pata pata plus 0 plus kru plus dva plus 0 and then we have the samasa saudnya so samasa yane purvekt palya pa applies substitutes dva with y and so we have pata pata plus kru plus y now the augment applies and so we have pata pata kritya as the finally derived compound output meaning after having made the pata pata sound pata pata is an indistinct imitation of the sound that happens in the nature we don't know what pa is what pata means and pa means and ta means and so on there is no distinct imitation this is indistinct imitation so pata pata is termed as gati and pata pata kritya is the gati samasa similarly when the meanings are after having slain we will get the gati samasa in the form of shakala kritya and sam shakala kritya as well as dham shakala kritya and bhamsha kala kritya when the meaning is after having inflicted pain we can have the compound which is gati samasa as gula gudha kritya and also when we have the meaning after having made together the compound output would be saju kritya similarly after having discovered if this is the meaning to be expressed we can get the gati samasa in the form of avishkritya also when the meaning is something non white is made white we get the compound form shukli kritam in the same derivational procedure now shukli kritya etc had the suffix tva substituted by lep as an example here are the examples where the suffix is t so we have shukli kritam which means something non white is made white 
Similarly, the sound pata pata was made. So we have the samasa pata pata kratam. When the meaning is something slain, the output generated would be shakala kratam or sam shakala kratam or dham shakala kratam or brahm shakala kratam, etc. Similarly, when the meaning is inflicted pain, the compound generated output would be gulagudha kratam. Similarly, when the meaning is after having made together, the compound output would be sajuh kratam. And when the meaning is something that is discovered, the output would be avish kratam. To summarize, Gati Tatpurusha Samasa is a very important type of Tatpurusha Samasa. It involves typical words semantically linked with the action denoted by the verbal root to which is added suffixes making the whole form an indeclinable, namely the absolutives. Chvi, which is a zero suffix, is also expressing semantically complex structure which is prevalent in many modern Indian languages even now. And we see so many words which are derived in the same fashion without people realizing the underlying derivational procedure. Study of Gati Samasa will throw some light on so many such words and the underlying such procedure. And it is hoped that the knowledge of such samasas and the Paninian grammatical derivational procedure will enable and empower people to not commit, commit linguistic errors that they inadvertently and without having the proper knowledge of Paninian grammar commit. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.